Good morning, colleagues. I would like to welcome you all to yet another event with ICBIS. My name is Meshia Morani, and thank you for choosing us this morning. Today's event is titled NACO. What's in a name? NACO stands for Name Authority Cooperative Program. In today's event, we'll hear and learn a lot about NACO, obtain an overview of authority control and its role in the modern library catalog. The event was sparked by the series of events that we previously had, where ICBIS looked at the power of the cataloger to tell a more inclusive story through metadata, as well as through the ICBIS engagements on the Cataloging Code of Ethics for South Africa. As a result, these engagements have initiated a focus on a practical ways to empower catalogers and metadata practitioners to effect change in their practice. Our first speaker for the day is Sarah Golby, who is the ICBIS PRO. She will provide us with an update on the work and progress being made by the Ethics Task Team for South Africa. Over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Mosha. I'm going to juggle my screens now and bring up the next presentation. Can everyone see the presentation? Yes, it's in presentation. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to be presenting a brief update on the South African Cataloging Ethics Task Team, and we'll also let you know about the questionnaire currently in distribution. The task team coordinator, Tini de Klerk, is unable to join us this morning, so she's asked me to do an update on her behalf. For a little bit of background, the task team was created as a response to the development and publishing of an international cataloging code of ethics in 2021. IGBIS has facilitated several webinars on this topic, and these are all available on the LIASA News YouTube channel, which we will link to in the chat. So before I get to the core project update, there have been some changes to the task team leadership that you should know about. At the beginning of May, the ICBIS Executive Committee received notice from Ms. Judith Noble that she is unable to continue as task team coordinator. We met virtually with the task team on Friday, 12 May and decided on a way forward. Ms. As the deputy coordinator, Ms. Tini de Klerk has stepped forward as the new coordinator. Ms. Karen Oxley continues her role as secretary. Whilst the deputy position is empty, task team members will contribute to leadership activities where possible. So the development of a questionnaire has been a key project for the task team over the last few months. The task team understood that to achieve its goals, the participation of the broader cataloging and metadata community in South Africa is essential. The aim of the task team is to determine national interest and support for the cataloging code of ethics as developed by the cataloging ethics steering committee and its working groups. To achieve this, the objective is to establish the viewpoints and understand perceptions of South African metadata practitioners as they relate to ethical practice and a cataloging code of ethics. So the first half of the year has seen the development of a pilot questionnaire. A draft was first reviewed by task team members and following this feedback process, the pilot was compiled. This pilot went out to pre-selected cataloging departments on the 15th of May with a deadline for submission of the 26th of May. Based on the responses and feedback on question formulation and user experience, the questionnaire went through its final revision phase. 
The final questionnaire titled Ethics in South African Descriptive Metadata Practices officially went into circulation yesterday and it will run until Friday 30th of June. We request the participation of individuals working with metadata and descriptive bibliographic data in their daily practice. This isn't only confined to libraries, but it also includes organizations like galleries, archives and museums as well as self-employed and freelance professionals. For example, participants can be catalogers in cataloging and classification departments, metadata practitioners in database and academic repository services, and information practitioners interfacing between users and metadata. These are duties that are performed in a wide variety of information-related institutions and services. A very important project running concurrently is the translation of the cataloging code of ethics into South Africa's official languages. Our IGBIS chair, Fatima Darius, has been working closely with volunteers to make this happen. At this time, there are six final draft documents available for viewing, and these are linked to in the questionnaire for respondents to access. You might see the questionnaire from a couple of mailing lists during the month, and we do apologize for any cross postings, but it is vital that we get a wide pool of responses. So we're really hoping to see a positive and generous response from the community. Please share it across your networks so we can ensure as many people as possible in the metadata community get to contribute to this project. And here are the links to the questionnaire and translations, and these will also be included in the chat. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for their time this morning. I will now be handing over to Mersha again so that she can introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Hester Murray. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah, for giving us an update on the work that is done by the cataloging ethics uh, task team in South Africa. Um, I think now everyone is uh, updated with everything that is going on. I will now uh, introduce our guest speaker for the day, who is not a stranger to the IGBIS community, Dr. Hester Marius. Dr. Marius is employed at the University of South Africa since 1984 and has also spent some time with the National Library of South Africa. She has an extensive experience and knowledge in bibliographic and authority control. Uh, Dr. Marius participates in conferences and events, both uh, regionally and internationally, and present papers uh, at workshops, sharing her expertise in cataloging and authority control. She has received a NACO training locally in Pretoria and internationally in Washington, DC from the United States Library of Congress. Dr. Marius is the NACO funnel coordinator in South Africa and conducts NACO accredited training programs for South African catalogers. As a former IGBIS chair, she continues to support the interest group. We are very fortunate to host Dr. Hester Marius and looking forward to an informative session with her today. Dr. Hester, over to you. Thank you very much. Good morning, can you see me? Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about NICO. It is a little bit more than just NICO, but um, we'll get to NICO later. <laughs> the person who choose the, the 
name of the presentation, what's in a name, is either a, a William Shakespeare a, a fan or she knows um, William Shakespeare because that is what Juliet said when her family said she cannot um, go out with Romeo. And she complained and said, if his name is different, he is still a very handsome little boy and she wants to go out with him. What is in a name? A rose is a rose. Doesn't matter what you call it. So what is a name? A name is a word or set of words by which a person or thing is known or addressed or referred to. Not all names are used in a library situation. Little Maddie McCain will never wrote a book, but a book can be wrote about her and her family. And that is one of the things that we need to remember. If a person personal name or uh, uh, any other name are used or need to be used in a, in a library catalog, it even is a, as a subject heading, it will be created as a personal name in the personal name authority file. Corporate bodies is also deemed as authors. There can be information about them, their annual reports. We are all very uh, uh, aware of the load shedding schedules. That is ESCOM's uh, uh, output. It can be used in a authority record. Animals. The, 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 the definition said it can be a person or it can be an animal. This is the well-known uh, uh, animals. Arambay is a gorilla, but he saved a little boy who fell into his uh, uh, enclosure. The cat lo lovers will know Grumpy Cat because he, is, because he is the poster child for grumpiness. Duke is the last male northern white rhino in the world, and he is under 24-hour protection. How sad is that? Dolly the sheep. And then Laika, the first animal, the first dog who went into space. That is examples of things that have a name. But we're working with RDA. What does RDA say about names? And when we started with RDA, we fall, we, we, we started, and sometimes we does not read the information in the introduction. And there is very important information that we need to know. And that is RDA. 0431 about differentiation. And the guideline is that data described in a resource should differentiate that resource from other resources. The date describing an entity associated with a resource should differentiate that entity from other entities and from other identities used by the same name or the same entity. Therefore, to, to summarize it, two persons, two corporate bodies, two titles in RDA cannot have the same name. It's as simple as that. Shakespeare, let's go back to Romeo and Juliet. Luckily for us, uh, Shakespeare is well known. There's more than 1,300 authority records for him and all his works. But there are other William Shakespeare's and we must find as catalogers a way 
to uniquely identify the different users, the, the, the different names, the different persons, the different identities. How do we do that? If you think about, if you look at this slide, if a, a, a user comes to you and says, I want a book by William Shakespeare, you're going to say, oh boy, where do you start? Luckily, William Shakespeare, there's only one William Shakespeare and this not that uh, uh, um, difficult to distinguish or to find the correct William Shakespeare. You will see on the previous slide, um, there was a William Shakespeare spirit. Now, uh, and this is where ethics is also coming into play. Whether you believe in spirits or not, you treat it as a serious catalogging issue. For example, the, the Shakespeare William, there's a spirit, and the 700 you will see there is a dubious author uh, uh, describing, telling what the author is. Is that our job? Is that uh, condescending? But what I want to say is, one Shakespeare, one person, one name, Shakespeare, William, uh, books, and the spirit of a person is treated differently as the author itself. Now, Shakespeare is not that difficult, but if your user come in and said, I want a book by John Smith, there's a problem. In IICR2, they were not very uh, or, or distinguishing between two names or two corporate bodies was not important. In RDA, the guideline is you cannot have two with the same name. And you will still find this in the authority file. You cannot add to it. And if your author is, for example, the, the art of poster making, you need to add something to the name to make the author unique. How do we make an author unique? By adding something to the name. The, the third Smith John, the hyphen is at the back, so he was born in 1924. Smith John, the hyphen is before the, is, is before the date, the, the other one was after the date. The second one was, he died in 1924. Always try to be as specific as possible. You know the full date is also 1924, therefore January 20, uh, the 12th as a birth date. If you do not have a birth date, you add an initial or a name. John C. Then, if you're running out of options, anything will do. John Smith, a lawyer, a drummer, an author of at a specific firm, or co-author of a book, of a book of a book, author at Cambridge University Press, financial services technical consultant. The the uh, third last John was in Loudon Hill. That's the only information that is needed or that was available to uniquely identify the person. John Smith, the lecturer, or John Smith, the lecturer in education. Now, if you ask yourself, now, why do I need to do, need to know this? Because I don't create authority records. Once a name is established or used in a bibliographic record, it is established. And if it is not the correct form of the name, or if it is not qualified, it makes authority control so much 
more difficult. It's not difficult, but it complicates the process. So all catalogers must know, first of all, one person, one name, one corporate body, one form of the name. There is, a, a, as I said, there is a, a guideline what to use. You start with the, the things that don't change. For example, a birth date, an initial or full names, a lecturer or the financial services technical consultant. He can change his, his, his uh, 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 job. He, he graduated to a, a uh, accountant. So that is why this is important for everybody, all the catalogers to know. There is the authority record for John Smith, the lecturer in education. If you look at the authority record, there are more than just a name. Authority control evolved with the time. Uh, the lecturer in education, the teacher's training, he studied at Patrick College in Dublin Island. He's a college teacher, he's a male. It gives more. It tells you the person's identity. And this is where authority is going. The Library of Congress started in 2015. They realized that authority control need to evolve with the times and with technology. And they changed authority control away from the text string based authority work to minting identifiers and managing identities, not managing names per se, but concentrating now more on managing the identity of a person. So what is the official definition of identity management? An identity, Let's try again. An identity is the qualities, beliefs, personal traits, appearance, and or expressions that characterizing a person or group. In identity management, a given identity object consists of a set of properties or attributes. These properties record information about the object either for purposes external to the model or to operate the model, for example, in classification and retrieval. It is not anymore just a person's name, it is an identity. And this is courtesy of Wikipedia. And this is not a library or RDI um, diagram. It is a diagram of identity management. You started out with an identity, a person or a corporate name or a body or a building or a gorilla. And it corresponds to identities. He is a male, he is an educator, he is, the, the birth date is there, his age is available, he's, he was born in the United States or more, Pretoria, or more um, specifically in Washington, D.C. And then there is attributes that you can add. It's a building, it is a person, whatever. So this is from Wikipedia and it very much or, or look very much like the Ferber diagram. But what does it do for catalogers? What does it do for our users? Because we are not cataloging for our pleasure, we are doing it for our users. 
it's like in a scenario. And a uh, um, lecturer retired and boxes and boxes of documents are delivered to the library. And in one of the boxes, there's a Betamax video and a book. And on both of them, there is Arlene Dahl. Now, is an author and a, a, a actress the same thing? I wasn't. I I don't know. So, what do you? What do we do as catalogers when we are unsure? We go to ourselves. And luckily, in this case, there is an authority record, and the user can see Doll Arlene. She's an American. And if you go down to the 374 fields, she's an actor, actor or actress. She's a model. She's an author. She's female. She's English. Motion picture acting, 372. She's into, into beauty, personal beauty, and astrology. So from the authority record, we can determine it is the same person. Even though the, the photos is not, doesn't look, she was probably a little bit younger in the, uh, um, when the, the uh, Betamax was made. But she's well known because the book always asks a man the key to femininity. There are more than 200,000 copies sold. Therefore, it is the same person. But when you look at the two 024 fields, there are identifiers and they are live. When your user clicked on the top one, for example, it is the uh, uh, ISNI, International Standard Name Identifier, it will get a whole list of all her works, what she's done. And it helps them, the user, to find more information that they did, probably didn't know exist about the person. More books about her, more, more uh, videos or films about her. The second one is FIAF, the Virtual International Authority File, also where the user can get information. This is the future of cataloging. Identifiers use and direct the user to more information. We're talking this morning about authority files. You can also add identifiers in bibliographic records. Another example, Gandhi Mahatma, and there are more. There's Wikidata, uh, again, the Virtual International Authority File, ISNI Inter International Standard Name Authorities. But the, the um, uh, two long ones, the Music Brains, it is probably links to, to actors that played the role as Gandhi in videos. There is a music link. Therefore, it is much more information as just the author or the, the user can get much more information as, as just information about Gandhi. The last example, oh, what I want to say is, um, you will notice when you work in the authority file that Wikipedia, um, FIAF, Virtual International Authority File, and ISNI is in most of the records. And I've got a sneaky suspicion that um, Library of Congress um, get it automatically from um, the institutions. There is actually, um, you can buy the links from vendors to add to your uh, um, catalog. The last example 
is our own Nelson Mandela. And there's only one link. There's only one identifier. I don't know if you if you notice that there is no South African um, examples because I couldn't get any. This identifiers that we need to add in authority records and BIP records is each country's responsibility. If it is a well-known person, we can be lucky that a, a wealthy nation can add it for us in our authority records. But if they don't add it to one of our biggest heroes, Nelson Mandela, I'm afraid we're going to lose out and our users are going to lose out. Therefore, we need more people to do authority control. Which brings me to what is NICO. Through the NICO program, participants contribute authority records for personal, corporate, and jurisdictional names, uniform titles, and series to the LC NICO authority file. Membership in NICO is open to individual institutions willing to support their staff and, and users through a process of training review and direct contributions to the records of records to the LC name authority file. You may also, as a NICO participant, make changes to existing records for cer within certain parameters. This is, NICO is only one of the Library of Congress's uh, programs. Um, we talked about NICO today because it is the uh, uh, authorities. But it is only one, and you will see in the PCC program overview, NICO is the beginning of international contribution on different uh, uh, fields. NICO is name authorities, BIPCO. You can contribute all your bibliographic records to uh, um, uh, OCLC or on OCLC for Library of Congress. Concert is series and psycho is subject headings. But NICO is the beginning. What do you need to do if you want to become a NICO participant? First of all, you, your institution must become a member of the PCC. It is free of charge. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, it is just to get a grip on all the libraries and to make sure they um, are willing to follow certain guidelines. All the information that you need uh, if you want to become a, a NICO participant is on the links on the, on the slide. And if you are struggling, you can um, email me and I will help you. What is the aim of NICO? High value with low effort. The more, the more NICO libraries create authority records, the more authority records are available for other libraries all over the world to use. It is easier to um, add something to change an, an authority record than creating it from scratch. It is for the greatest good of all. Who knows the most or who have easier access to a country's academics, heroes, politicians, the libraries, the librarians, the people of the country. And that is the um, success of 
nickel. The Americans handling their their uh, nickel records, their uh, um, authors, and if every country do it, so much easier. They don't know that uh, uh, Bella Bella had changed his name. They don't know that there is a, a, a an EEF. For them, EEFF don't know anything. We in South Africa know the history. We know our uh, uh, authors, our lecturers. That is the purpose for of NICA, that each country handle their NICA, their name authorities. But unfortunately, we at this stage do not have enough participants. What is the parameters of NICA? Your library need your library must agree to follow a common set of standards and guidelines. Why? We are working as NICO participants in the catalog and the authority file of the Library of Congress. We are not, we, we create the records on OCLC, but the OCLC authority file is a copy of the Library of Congress's authority file. If Library of Congress decided, okay, we had enough, nobody is, or, or people are not using the guidelines that we stipulate, they can ask us to not create authority records anymore. How are you going to feel if you were somebody else coming your catalog and don't follow the rules. You're not going to be happy. Therefore, unfortunately, your institution must follow, must sign an agreement that they will follow the standards and guidelines. And that is also why individuals cannot become NICO participants. Because you don't have, as an individual, let's say, I want to retire next year, I'm going to continue creating authority records. Do I have access to OCLC? Can I afford to? I don't think so. It, everything is there to protect the integrity of the authority file. If your library is not willing to sign the PCC, a, a document to say they will use the uh, required standard. Unfortunately, that's the end of the story there. What the standards that they, that the Library of Congress is using is the standards that you use in your library. It's RDA, it's Library of Congress subjugatings, etc. It's nothing new. There is a few, examples a few ex uh, um, what, where there is different rules more rules but it the basic is what you are doing every day NICO training it is five full days um, that's why there are two uh, um, things that you must do before you can become a NICO trainer, a NICO um, participant, you must work on OCLC. Five full, full days just to do uh, um, the basics of NICO uh, participation. There is no opportunity to add OCLC usage as well. If you are not cataloging on OCLC, your bibliographic records, unfortunately, you cannot become a NICO participant. It is just a practical issue. The values of the program for 
cooperative cataloging, and it is the same for NICO. Collaboration. Together, we accomplish more together than we can on our own. Sharing. We share metadata, experience, training, standards, the best and best practices. Innovation. I've showed you the, the identifiers. We experiment, we take risks, and we learn by doing it. If you want, um, well, let, let me put it like this. Um, I had quite a few emails and phone calls in the past 18 months for individuals asking for NICO training. As I said, it must, uh, your institution must ask for NICO training. Um, why? We, uh, uh, how can I put it? Uh, we work together, but the sharing, how are an individual going to say, I am willing to, to uh, um, follow the standards. There is no way that they can come back and say, oops, um, the standards is not what it is supposed to be. We empower people. If you want to add NICO training onto your CV, you must go through your library. And by adding NICO training to your CV, Unfortunately, it doesn't mean much. The training starts when you start working, when you start creating authority records. A reviewer will be assigned to the library and only when the reviewer are sure that you know and that you follow the, uh, the guidelines, and you've created enough records to show that you are capable, will you receive independence? And when you are independent, you can put it on your CV and say, I am an independent NICO cataloger. It's hard work. It's not something that you get for free. Inclusion, that is the, uh, we are strengthening by participating from all communities and diversity of viewpoints and experience. Communication, we need to com communicate, we value consultation, responsiveness and transparency. That's my story for, <laughs> For NICO, if um, there is questions, we we can uh, look at it later. But I need to go back to RDI and names again in the introduction of RDI. RDI 0433 relationships. The data describing a resource should indicate significant relationships between the resource described and other resources. The previous one was one name, one identity, one authority record. So now it is the relationships between the resource described and other resources. The data describing an entity associated with a resource should reflect all significant bibliographic relationships between that entity and other such entities. And I can, this, uh, the diagram will explain it better. We've got a book, Gone with the Wind. On the left hand side, it was created by a person, Margaret Mitchell. But that work, Gone with the Wind, has a subject, a concept. It is the history of, the, uh, of Georgia, the Civil War, 1861, and it's fiction. 
It has all another subject, a person, O'Hara Scarlet, which will be in the authority file. And there's a genre. It is cons, uh, war stories, and historical fiction. And then once again, the is, is created by Margaret Mitchell. This is relationships. It can only be done in authority records. And if you look at the top one work, Gone with the Wind, this is where it starts with the work authority records. The implication is, if there is not a work authority record, our library systems is going to fall flat because it's the starting point. From Gone with the Wind, there will, can be uh, uh, links to all the videos, all the DVDs, all the movies, all the translations. Who's supposed to do that? Every country must do their own. If we are lucky, it is a well-known uh, uh, author with a, a, a hit that is turned into a video or a, 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 a film. Somebody else will do it for us. But the bottom line is, it's our responsibility. The National Library can't do it all. The few NACO uh, uh, libraries cannot do it all. And who's going to lose out? The smaller indigenous languages. We've got a lot of work. We've got a lot of responsibility. That's my story. Madam Chair, I don't know if there's time for questions. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, now is your opportunity to ask us burning issues, burning questions. The floor is open. Any comments, you can put them in the chat or raise your hand and uh, we can ask Dr. Hester. Please, participation is uh, highly regarded. It seems everyone is satisfied with the, <laughs> the talk. There are no questions? Oh, there don't seem to be any questions today. I see Alta has her hand up. Oh, Alta, go ahead. Um, thank you, Dr. Esther. Um, I want to know regarding the identifiers um, of our lecturers' uh, org IDs. Um, is it possible to add it in the should it be in the zero to four field or can we add it in the hundreds field in the bibliographic record? The, um, thank you for that question. Uh, I neglected, I might make a note, but I neglected to, to um, mention it. The zero to four field is the field for all the uh, um, identifiers. So the org. ID should be in the uh, uh, zero two field, but nothing stops you to add it in in the one hundred field as well. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks, Alta. 
In, any other questions? Um, I, I, I'd like Lexit also to say, it is not just personal names that have identifiers. There are identifiers for businesses, for videos, for DVDs, for music works, for almost anything there are uh, identifiers. If it is available, use it. Thanks, everyone. Um, are there no more questions? Then we can go over to Fatima for our uh, closing off. Thank you, Ingrid. I'm just seeing if there's maybe another hand somewhere. Yeah. Good morning. It would help if I had my microphone. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So we've come to the end of the uh, session this morning. Um, Thank you all for uh, attending. And as Marcia said this morning, thank you for choosing this this morning. Uh, thank you to the speakers, uh, Dr. Hesir Mare, um, a very familiar face within the ICBIS um, community, uh, previous chair of, um, of ICBIS, as well as um, I think Hesir, you spoke about NACO in a previous um, um, uh, session with ICBIS as well. So thank you very much this, uh, uh, for your presentation this morning. Uh, thank you to Sarah for the update on the ethics uh, uh, cataloging code of ethics task team. And of course, the survey is out. Please don't forget to go and uh, fill it out. Please share it uh, within your organization and amongst your contacts. And then finally, thank you to all of you for coming and participating in this morning's uh, session. Um, and then also to the ICBIS National Committee, thank you for your work preceding the event as well as during the event this morning. Thank you very much. Um, now, colleagues, um, if you can kindly uh, put your cameras on, we are going to do what we always do. Fatima. Yes. Fatima, sorry to disturb you. There's a question from Mapule. Uh, okay. She's asking, uh, I think it's it, uh, how many rivers do we have in South Africa? I think she wanted to say that. Okay, hey, Steph, do you have any idea how many rivers there are in South Africa? Um, at this stage, uh, four. Four. Yes. I'll pull in as that answer your question. Are you interested in being a reviewer, Mapule? Thanks, Fatima. Yes, I did hear that it's just four. I was expecting more, but yes, as they yeah. did answer my question. Thank you. I think that there are more people creating, so let's make a distinction between the people who are creating, maybe history, and yes. the people who are independent reviewers. Could you speak a little bit about that, Esther, about the independent reviewers, um, and, and so that if Mapule is interested, she knows what is expected of her, and indeed any of the other colleagues. The review period is actually when you start learning. The theory, yeah, it's on paper, but doing it is when you start learning. The requirement from Library of Congress is at between 80 and uh, between 30 and 80 records. That is correct. Some people are doing it in 
it takes them years to, to be in, independent. It depends on how many records you create. And then that, re that records must be correct. You can create 120 records, but 100 of them are not correct. So it depends on the person. How many, um, the more records you create and they are correct, the quicker you are independent. All right. Okay, it looks like that's it. There are lots. Of, there are lots of thank yous in the in the chat, Esther. We will ask uh, Apelile to pull that for us again, as as usual. Um, colleagues, if you want to um, know anything further, Esther is the as we said earlier this morning, the uh, coordinator for South Africa for the Library of Congress. She does have an email address on the screen at the moment. I think if you want to, you can take the opportunity to contact her further after the session. Um, so I will give you, maybe we must uh, just uh, take your email and put it in the chat. Can you put your email in the chat, Esther? That would be useful. And then can I ask you to stop sharing your screen? Thank you. Okay, Kali. So now we are at that thing that I was talking about earlier, where we would like to take a screenshot. Uh, we will use it in the liaison in touch. Um, so if you'd like to put your cameras on, put the lipstick on, adjust the dookie, put the brilla on properly, um, and then Apelele will help us. Sarah and I will also do it. And I see that we've got four screens here. I don't know how we uh, can put more people on in the same screen, but we are going to try and do all four screens. Okay, so what's the word today? Neko. What is in a name? Okay, here we go. Smile, everybody. Screen one. Screen two. I'm just going to wait a moment. What is in the name? Rose by any other name. Somebody is sharing this screen. Is it me? I don't think it's me. Uh, because I can't see pictures. Apelele, can you, uh, can you, can so you someone make has shared the screen. Yeah, can you make it stop, <laughs> please? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is it? Ah, thank you. I just need one more. I think. All right, one last one. What is in the name? Okay, got it. Okay, colleagues, we are on the dot 11 o'clock. It's now my pleasure to thank you very much once again and to say goodbye, have a good day. Thank you.